So for the purpose of this video, I kind of decided to look more deeply into um, gender roles and kind of where they come from and why they exist. Um, I think it's really interesting that this class kind of brought to light like the existing gender binary and that we really categorize things into either male or female and how uncomfortable we feel when something doesn't fit into that category. Um, I think a great example of that is kind of talking about transgender people and the stuff that they go through. Um, I did a lot of reading kind of on my own and, and one thing I read about was a sports columnist named Mike Penner who decided to um, come out as a woman, as a transgender woman, and um, had an interview with Vanity Fair and basically the, the interview kind of said um, in the article that Mike wasn't very passable like as a female and this was absolutely sorry Christine and there's the issue we make these mistakes I go towards saying Mike when it is now Christine and it is a very problematic part of our culture that we still assign these technical gender definitions um identities but basically um this article really kind of said that Christine wasn't particularly feminine and this kind of goes into the whole like part of passability and uh, the video that we had that talks about the problem of passability why something has to be passable why there has to be this specific gendered idea why it has to be so black and white um, so anyways this this individual Christine um, was going to undergo sex surgery and did not and uh, actually came back to work as a man came back as Mike Penner to continue writing um, for the sports column that he had done before and um, ended up committing suicide in 2009 so we see that this kind of this our culture is just so not accepting of these things and it can drive people to the point of you know suicide um, another example, a contemporary example, is Caitlyn Jenner and the fact that, um, you know, she has gotten a lot of, a lot of support from everyone um, with her transition and with everything else, but um, actually there's an article from the New York Times by Rhonda Gerlich which talks about the fact that uh, when Caitlyn first came out as a woman, her cover that she had, um, once again on Vanity Fair, was her suddenly very flirtatious it was very suggestive and it kind of you know everything about her femininity was suggested um of sexuality and suddenly there was no more attention paid to the fact that this was an olympic hero that this was an olympic gold medalist and it was just about the sex appeal um and there's actually a quote from the article i will read um that says <clears throat> Uh, basically, the entire way that Caitlyn Jenner's transition is perceived, it is much more than a private matter. It is a commercial spectacle on an enormous scale, revealing some disturbing truths about what we value and admire in women. So again, that is a quote from Rhonda Gayerlich in uh, the New York Times. Um, and it's true, like suddenly all of you know, Jenner's achievements and accomplishments don't really seem to matter and it's just, you know, portraying, you know, her as a very sexual being and kind of thrown across the couch and I'm sure everyone has seen the cover. She's wearing like a very pretty dress and like in a very, it's almost like a little Playboy bunny thing and kind of in a very cute little pose. Um, so suddenly that becomes the value. And I just thought it was interesting to think about where does this sort of idea start so the study from Karen Martin where she went to uh, it was five different preschools and observed that kind of the way the different um, kind of ways that gender is communicated in certain spaces and uh, there is um, quite a few there's there was the I believe she looked at the way they dressed the way children dressed and also um, kind of the way they were treated and um, both by teachers and by their peers. So what um, Martin had observed was that girls pretty much almost wore pink nearly every day and not a single boy was observed wearing pink. Um, men or boys usually wore primary colors, sometimes fluorescent green and fluorescent orange. Um, but that again goes back to like these very, very simple tiny things that we as a society, as a culture, 
don't think about that we make the gendered norms and it's really not shouldn't uh, who says it's normal who decides that who why why is pink a girl and why is blue a boy it doesn't really there's no particular reason for why that makes that normal um also martin studied kind of the way that boys and girls were disciplined which i thought was really interesting was that um boys tended to be yelled at and more physically restrained or disciplined if they're doing something wrong um, and girls had a much more gentle approach. So that also, you know, could correlate a lot with why men would get, you know, they, when they get frustrated and when they're aggressive, they exhibit in much more violent ways. When a guy is angry, he's likely to throw something against a wall and make a whole spectacle, whereas girls will either internalize or they'll find another way to express their frustration. Um, and this could, this probably goes back to just a very young age and being disciplined by teachers and men were more physically restrained and, and uh, had a lot more physicality aspects. Um, also, it was noted in Martin's research that girls tend to take up less space, less physical space. Um, they cross their arms, they cross their legs, um, and they just kind of, you know, we kind of shrink down. And um, men tend to be much more dominant. We They cross their arms, they spread their legs, and they're much more about taking up space. Um, and kind of the way that Martin's research, it was really, really interesting. And it kind of went on to show that these gendered spaces don't just, you know, they don't just work at school. It's hospitals, workplaces, churches, almost every space that we go into kind of has a specific category for the way that men or that women should be or should act. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting just to kind of watch um, everything in this class has been very kind of eye-opening in terms of saying that maybe there doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, just this or that. Um, and one of the, um, the, the readings, um, from the course actually had to do with an individual that was born as a, as a girl and started having feelings thinking that maybe it was lesbian, she was lesbian, um, then realized she didn't really want to have sex with the girl. So then became obsessed with kind of watching all these videos of men um, undergoing the transition um, and kind of, or transitioning to male and then kind of decided, okay, I'm gonna take the step and get the hormones and do that. So um, this individual did that and um, you know, kind of went through that process and then realized, you know, once again, like this isn't really working for me. Um, so finally kind of had the breakthrough that maybe I don't have to pick a gender. Um, maybe I can just be a gender, like just shouldn't really matter. And it was kind of interesting to, to see that that could be an option that you don't have to be male or female. You can just choose whichever one, you know, whatever feels right. Or if you want to wake up one day and and you know have a beard and wear a mini skirt then so be it and who is to say otherwise and um i really think that there is definitely kind of a changing understanding um and acceptance of what we allow you know they're talking you know about making um gender neutral bathrooms and kind of germany is now the first country that you don't have to put um the sex of your baby on a birth certificate so there are things being done and moves being made it's kind of a more broad understanding and acceptance of what a person is. Like it doesn't have to just be your male or your female. Um, you know, and I, I've written in the class and I've personally said that, you know, when I was younger, I was, uh, I was definitely like a tomboy. I played a lot of sports and I got ridiculed for it because people were always kind of like, oh, she's so, I was tough. You know, I wanted to fight with the boys and I was like, you know, always really competitive and really, really active and physical. And that was just, I wasn't, wasn't girly enough per se, you know? And then it kind of like with puberty and my own development, I kind of, you know, I hate to say it. I, I'm not really that tough anymore. I'm concerned with my appearance. And, uh, I mean, that's, it's an unfortunate truth that I, I put a lot of value in, you know, the way I look. And if I go out there and play a contact sport and smash my face in, odds are my life would be a little bit more difficult. So anyways, that is kind of my understanding um, of what I've kind of taken from this class so far in understanding um, just the gender binary and what we, you know, how we as a society um, take culture and make it so black and white between masculine and feminine and maybe that doesn't have to be like that.
So that is all. Thank you.